Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Or not. Welcome to social distancing guitar building. Uh, I'm working from home for a while, as are you, I hope. Burn it. Ah, <laughs> yay! Um, I hope everybody's well and keeping safe and all that jazz. And most importantly, doing stuff, if at all possible. Uh, this is my first video uh, shot here. We are going to be interrupted by kittens, I am sure, and children and all that jazz, but that's what they're there for, aren't they? You are going to see a tour of the micro workshop that I've built in the background there uh, in order to, you know, carry on making and building and creating things and predominantly sawdust, lots, lots, lots of sawdust. Uh, but anyway, for today, what I have planned is, I really enjoyed building a base in the last series. And I didn't really want to follow up that base directly with another base. So I thought, okay, well, look, I'm going to be doing this from home. It needs to be a challenge. It needs to be something, you know, interesting. And I thought, well, why don't I do a twin neck? Do, do, you know, a bass and a guitar. And then, and then the thought actually occurred that maybe I could potentially do, uh, I've been threatening to build a Star Wars style guitar for, for a long time. And I thought, oh, a, a Star Wars based twin neck. That could be pretty freaking awesome. And, uh, and then it occurred, maybe I should also do that in a 24 hour, you know, race against the clock kind of thing because, you know, why not? You're in a new workshop with limited machines and no tools and, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll forget that last bit. Let me know in the comments below as you watch this design develop. If you want to see me build this in the first place, there's the neighbor's dog. If you want me to do this at all, if you want me to do it as a challenge, what materials you think I should make it out of, because I've got some ideas that you won't get. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Anyway, Q, Q designing a new twin neck guitar. Bass, guitar, bass, bass, guitar, bass and guitar. Hello, kitten. If you knock that tripod over. Good. He didn't. I need sandbags. Uh, it, it got it got bright uh, a little bit. I, I'm suffering from snow blindness now and an excess of cool. Um, well, I haven't done the headstocks yet. That was the rough, this is the rough idea. 
So the thought as I went in was, you know, Rebel and Alliance, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that now. And that's the rough shape. I'm not going to do those headstocks. But here is where we are. Um, I can't quite see the screen actually. No headstocks yet. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. I want to build it. I really, I really, really want to build it. Welcome to Crimson Guitars or not. Uh, okay, the world is in chaos. I hope you are keeping yourself safe and staying at home and, and sane. And uh, on that last bit, <sighs> I needed a workshop at home. And uh, this, this is not it, actually. Uh, I, I missed the gun. Uh, I've, I've been on this property now for a little under a year. And the plan has always been to, over there, build a relatively large um, 20 by 10 or thereabout foot not meter, um, workshop for me to be able to do some filming at home. And th th essentially I've been doing landscaping and mini diggers and terracing and all sorts of stuff and haven't had the, uh, uh, the timing has been wrong for that workshop. And then when all of this happened, I finished the landscaping and thought, okay, well, I, I need to get, get the materials for the shed. And of course, <sighs> everybody shut down. I, however, did manage to find this, which is uh, ostensibly uh, 10 by 8. I think it's 10 by, I think it's 9 by 7 and a bit or something like that. But um, it is amazing what you can get in a small workshop. And uh, I am going to be doing videos from here. I am going to be doing projects. I am going to be doing many, many things. Uh, from small one-day builds like plectrums and uh, bits and pieces like that to full guitars in their entirety. In fact, in fact, I have a timed build planned, potentially. So, well, this, I'm going to give you a quick tour of this shop. This is what I what I think at this point I, I, I need, it's, it's half guitar building and half uh, I've been promising my kids various things for the last year and a half. When we have a workshop, you can have a lathe, for example. And uh, my son did his first ever unassisted turning the other day. And uh, yeah, as a nine-year-old, he turned something better than the, my first 20 projects. But anyway, uh, let's have a quick tour of this very, very tiny, tiny space. First of all, I'll show you what, we've, what we're dealing with. See, I have to duck to get out. Um, now over here, when we bought this place, there was a lot of crap left over, including old, old oil containers and various bits and pieces. Um, that's an old green shed that uh, I couldn't take apart because it was just had too many million screws and nails and things. So my, my boys are going to have that as a, a Nerf den. Um, this footprint here, that's going to be the actual workshop uh, when it is, uh, when it's ready to be delivered. We've put hardcore down. This is all going to be graveled and there's various bits and pieces and stuff happening. Say hello, Jasper. He didn't say hello. Oh, there we go. There's a kitten. Anyway, so this is a major work in progress, but this is what we are dealing with here. A relatively small workshop. I opted for uh, a pre sort of kit build, and you're going to be able to see this coming together in time lapse later with lots of windows at Perspex. Probably put some proper glazing in at some point. <clears throat> anyway, what I need to be able to have to build guitars. Turns out to be quite a lot of stuff, but not really as much as I thought. <laughs> In this space, I am convinced that I will be able to build full guitars a little bit slower than before. 
the random orbital sander actually is still in a box, come to think of it. Um, but I think the thing I will miss most is a bandsaw. But other than that, you can do it. Quick whirlwind tour. Uh, I have some, some stock that there is some sort of pre-prepped maple, uh, a few boxes of uh, turning blanks for my son. Triton really came through. I told them I was building this and they said, hey, we'll send you some stuff. Um, and this here is the machine. Uh, the first machine that I bought at Crimson Guitars, period, was one of the, was a, an oscillating spindle sander. And an oscillating spindle belt sander is absolutely necessary. Yes, that's a guitar hanger with a carving, this is a Veritas carver's clamp vice thing. Anyway, uh, so that is essential. Uh, as I said before, small lathe for my son and of course myself to play with. Uh, I've got many, many plans for that. I'm also gonna be doing some sharpening and bits and pieces and probably a little bit of uh, tool restoration. Uh, VintageToolShop.com and CrimsonGuitars.com, neither business is shut down. Um, <clears throat> in the UK, we have been advised to stay at home if possible, but the government wants manufacturers and online retailers to stay. Um, that was me being distracted by my kitten pooping in my wife's brand new flower bed. Um, anyway. Uh, so, yes, both companies are shut to the public and we don't have students at Crimson and I'm currently not buying very many tools at the tool shop, but we are shipping tools, we are manufacturing tools at Crimson, uh, we have a skeleton crew on at both companies, both keeping, keeping very separate apart from each other and doing the whole social distancing thing and there are many fewer people than normal, but uh, yeah, both companies are shipping out daily. So the only real thing that's slowing us down at the moment is the actual couriers themselves. But uh, anyway, back to the tour. Angle grinder, I'm gonna do some carving at some point. Uh, I have got a, uh, a Triton multi-tool that's got a sanding attachment. Uh, I've also got various grouting bits and pieces for uh, some of the work that I've got on at home. This is in the back there, a handheld spindle sander. Uh, when I wasn't sure if this was going to arrive uh, due to the aforementioned couriers not working very well, uh, I brought that back from Crimson. Uh, a jigsaw. This jigsaw is going to be, I hope, the most important thing in a guitar build for me at this, in this workshop at least, until I've got a bandsaw. You can build a guitar, well, you can build a guitar using nothing but a standard hardpoint saw, to be honest. Uh, but I'm going to try with a jigsaw and then of course the middle-sized Triton router. I've been using these now for got to be at least a decade and I love it. Um, something else for the kids actually. This is a, this is, sorry that light's in the way. <laughs> this is a power carver and uh, they absolutely love messing around with that. Um, <clears throat> and of course a cactus, it's sort of de rigueur, shall we say. Uh, now with the Pro Edge, this is a very, very good sharpening system, uh, but uh, I didn't really have room for that and a grinder. So I've got on a little pigtail, one of those little cleaning mops because I'm gonna do some tool restoration while I'm here. Um, the tool shop is, well, is, look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Old. Good old Pratt or Millis Falls. Old Millis Falls. Andrew, I think I'm keeping that one. Uh, anyway, so with those machines and obviously some storage, uh, I've got, that's my leather working toolbox, uh, watch making stuff in there, watch making and jewelry, silversmith. I've got a box of Dremel tools down there and a spare home toolbox with some woodworking stuff. But what I need to build guitars though is drill bits. So we've got some Famag uh, Forstner bits here. They are just the best and uh, they're amazing. And this is a set of drill bits that I got from uh, Workshop Heaven actually. And uh, they are, I don't know what the brand is. 
Can you even see that? Made in Japan. Come on, I can't read that. Star M drill bits. I've been using these a lot for the last couple of days and they are very, very, very good. Um, rasps and files. I don't need quite so many, but I've got them. This is, I'm giving, uh, people are surprised to see a non-vintage set of chisels on my wall. And these are from Triton and they've been saying, Ben, give these a go. Uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, for about a year now, and I'm going to give them a, glow, a go. And so far, I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, various bits and pieces. Uh, these are the Triton clamps, the, the, what do they call them, quick clamps? I love them. I use them all the time. Um, and various long drill bits for guitar building, for sure. Scalpel blade away from the children. Um, this is, this is an antique pen knife that, uh, I really like the checkering pattern. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I pick up these interesting things probably through the tool shop and uh, then take inspiration from them. But anyway, obviously, Allen keys, carving, uh, carving mallet. <sighs> I need a rocking neck wrist and baby wipes because, you know, virus. Uh, but the most important things for a guitar building uh, workshop are things like measurement, and that is not straight edge, a standard straight edge, the nut slot string spacing rule and various rulers, etc. And branding, don't forget branding. Um, I've limited my planes down to what I've been telling you guys. I'm going to stand on the other side of the workbench now. I've been telling you guys that in reality, you need a block plane and then a number three or a number four, and then a number six or a seven or something like that. And really, well, I couldn't do that just because I like having planes too much. So I've got a number three uh, bedrock, which is beautiful. I've got a low angle Lee Nielsen Jack. I've got a low angle Kwong Shang, again from Workshop Heaven, and one of my old Lee Nielsen block planes. That was my home Lee Nielsen uh, small one there. And then uh, a number six that has yet to be sharpened, actually. Gouges, nut slot spacing rules, leveling file and sanding block. It's amazing when you think about it that actually all of these things really are needed. You have to have a, string, uh, a fret bender and more clamps and a drill and sandpaper. <sighs> protection, protection, and then saws. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a hand tool only build at some point in here, i.e. a non-powered tool build. Uh, and that will require things like saws and spoke shaves, etc. Um, many more clamps. I find myself using these quick clamps more and more. It, apparently the UK is one of the only companies that's actually uh, still uses G clamps quite as much. Everybody else is, uses these. Various jewelry making hammers, etc., and more crimson rules, string spacing rules, etc. Um, and then, of course, there's other there's bits and pieces about the roof. We've got, you know, glues and stuff. What I would like you to do, Cracky, is there anywhere that I can? There we go. It's it's all right this way. This, you get the glare from the door, and you just can't see see anything. Um, let me know what you think I'm missing, what I've forgotten to bring. Uh, there is a random orbital sander in a box that has yet to be unpacked. Uh, what tools, what machines, what jigs are absolutely essential for your guitar building? And in the end, I've managed to fit all of this in, in the... What's that? That's about the size of a good nest of sofas, shall we say. You don't need sofas at home, do you? If you're stuck in a flat, jettison them out a window. Or maybe through the door and don't kill anybody. Although, no, if they're outside, they shouldn't be. So, yeah, just jettison them. And uh, build a workshop at home, because making stuff, this is how you maintain sanity. This is how I maintain what passes for sanity. Yeah. Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to uh, 
sharing this workshop with you. It's going to be an incredible journey over the next couple of months. And uh, let me know what you think. Following up from here is time lapse of it being made. Because why not? It's a bright day. It's hot. This is not a nice shot. I'm going to be working from home for a while for, I don't know, it's a personal life choice, really, uh, quite frankly. Um, and I needed somebody to do that because I've not been here for long and I don't have a workshop yet. This is the first of several. This is the tiny, tiny, tiny one that will do for now. And uh, Tom and I need to build it. Yeah, I suppose we're going to do that then. Well, here we go. Uh, it got a little bit less hot and we got halfway through a very, very small workshop build. Uh, yeah, more on the morrow. Goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video and if you want to see more, click like and subscribe, uh, hit the notification button, all that jazz. And please let me know if you want to see me build this twin neck instrument of awesomeness.